Hey guys, Darren here. Welcome to Mayhem Country Living. You can see what we have. We have a tick. How about that? Lyme disease season, rather tick season, is here. Now, I want to go over a little bit of information with you about these guys. And I have a very personal experience with these as I have had Lyme disease before and it is not anything funny and I am one of the people that were reactive to it um, to the uh, tick bite so we are going to uh, let this guy finish crawling around and uh, then we will get back to it so more to come guys okay guys now we're back I was in my mid 30s and uh, I was living in uh, central Alabama in Birmingham and I do a lot of outdoor stuff, uh, camping, hiking, canoeing, and stuff like that. And at the time, I was doing a whole lot of uh, ultralight backpacking up into the uh, Smoky Mountains. And I would stay gone for, uh, I'd take off from work and stay gone for eight, nine days at a time and walk into the woods and walk out of the woods. And I came out one time with a tick on the inside of my thigh. And I was taking a shower and I noticed it and I killed it. Went down the shower drain. Uh, and then a few days later I started noticing a, a bullseye pattern, a concentric, concentric uh, circle of uh, bullseye bruising, which is kind of like atypical uh, sign that you have been exposed. Now they check uh, titer levels, it, it's based off of that, so it's really hard to diagnose unless you have active symptoms. Um, and so ache, fatigue, you feel like you're old, uh, my knees swelled up, uh, a lot of swelling, I, my legs swelled up so much I had stretch marks up and down my, uh, up and down my legs. It was really bad and I was, in a, I was living in a two-story condominium at the time. So I actually had to sit and go up the condo steps one at a time to my bedroom because my knees, uh, the pain and, and, and the swelling in my knees was so bad. At the time, not a lot of people knew about it, knew what it was. I'm going to say this was in like uh, mid-90s. Uh, so there wasn't a lot of internet availability at the time so I knew somebody uh, that knew something about it and we talked and did a bunch of research and everything I was working at UAB at the time so I had access to uh, like the medical library and we did a bunch of research and everything on it took it to the doctor and the doctor said oh, okay this could be this and and then they started pounded me uh, with doxycycline which is one way to treat it, what they did at the time. Now the kick in the butt is they treated me so, with so much doxycycline, it actually uh, stained my teeth. Uh, so my teeth have actually a slight yellow hue to them. Where she goes. And I guess I could get it uh, cleaned off, but after years and years of uh, polishing and uh, and UV brightening, it never really did it. Way, way it is though, I'm not dead, so I don't much care. But, um, that was what it was like to be old for me. My knees swelled up like an old man's arth arthritic knees. Pain, swelling, like I said, stretch marks, and it was mainly, it was located in my knees uh, for me. It turns out that it does not really go away and so is there, there is a chance for the disease to come back and you can do a lot of research on it. Where did it come from? Uh, it's in the environment, 
uh, some people say. Uh, forensic archaeologists have found evidence of Lyme disease bearing ticks up to 60,000 years ago in, you know, vegetation and, and, and stuff like that, fossils, uh, animals. But then we get to Plum Island, Connecticut. Plum Island, Connecticut was a research center. Always good conspiracy theory somewhere in there. Where the government was doing research on improving naturally occurring bacteria. Lyme disease is a naturally occurring bacteria and potentially weaponizing it. There you go. And so uh, Lyme Connecticut is just a few miles away from Plum Island off the coast and during the 70s a whole lot of kids became infected with what is now known as Lyme disease and it really wasn't there before so take that for what you will now what do you do uh, you know that, that's kind of an interesting uh, background on it but what do you do you get bit by a tick don't throw the tick away kill it if you want to put it in an aspirin bottle or a pill vial or something like that take the tick with you to your doctor show it to them don't let them walk out with a tick because they will lose it this is the tick they can check it to see if there's evidence of the bacteria in the tick don't let it go down the drain like I did because that can be problematic I ain't a doctor I could be crazy just as this is my uh, you, you know get out of jail warning I ain't a doctor I could be crazy check with your doctor about all this but I would save the tick pour a little alcohol in there cap it and take it with you uh, fatigue aches pains swelling bullseye pattern bruising around the bite mark is a really really big telltale sign that something ain't right uh, that you could be exhibiting something they have a lot of different ways to treat it now my sister my youngest sister actually got Lyme disease about a year and a half ago and she called me and asked me what did you know what happened and what did I do and, and what all went on because I really didn't talk to anybody about it like I said the, the internet was a novelty at the time and so it was easier to research it from uh, college uh, or college university where I worked it can be a booger wear long sleeves wear long pants cuffed tuck them in your socks. I know it doesn't look cool, but beats uh, getting a tick bite. If you don't do that and you're wearing shorts, check yourself periodically. Check yourself. Apply a really good repellent. You might have to use DEET. D-E-E-T. Yes, they still make a lot of repellents with DEET in it. Different percentage amounts of DEET take it for what you will if you want to do organics try organics if you don't don't I would use DEET um, but that's just me and I'm not a doctor I could be crazy it was life-changing uh, realizing that you could hurt that much chronic pain and this went on for about six months and with the constant bombardment of the massive doses of antibiotics and, and other, other medications I was taking. And I got better, obviously, and I, I, I don't have any problems right now. But 
they say that there is a chance that the bacteria is still in your system and it could come back. I don't know uh, the percentage incidence, you know, rate, but that's something you always want to be aware of. Now, if you go into the woods, check yourself, check your kids, check your pets, because they can fall off of your pets and get on you. They like anything that exhales carbon dioxide, pretty much. That is a marker. They will sit on plant leaves with their feet extended and wait for something to come by. And that is their life cycle. And when something does, warm-blooded, that's exhaling carbon dioxide, they will do their best to attach and then, you know, move along. So, I was unloading chicken feed and I walked under one of the cedar trees, brushed up against my arm and I came in the house. And I looked and I thought, I'll be, there's a freaking tick. And I thought, well, this might be a good idea to, to talk about it. But if you have the time, research Plum Island, Connecticut, Lyme disease theories, and it will give you all kinds of information. The gentleman who really uh, diagnosed it and refined treatment, uh, to which uh, the bacteria is actually named after him. I will not tell you his name because I will butcher it up. But it's actually very interesting reading, and who knows? Maybe it's true, maybe it's not. Uh, again, there's evidence of it 60,000 years ago. Uh, in uh, earlier history in uh, fossil records. Maybe. Maybe not. Maybe it was weaponized, refined a little bit. Because, uh, you know, that's something that could really be a booger. A weaponized bacteria or virus. Interesting. The times we live in. Anyway, I thought this might be something you would be interested in as well. Take care of you people, guys.